population of public sector workers, members of the press, welcome to this signing ceremony. This is a, a signing ceremony between the, the government of Liberia, represented by the Ministry of Finance, Education, Health, and the Civil Service Agency, and the Consortium of Public Sector Workers. We we'll call them Consortium, including the uh, the Civil Service Association of Liberia, National Teacher Association of Liberia, the National Health Workers Association of Liberia, the Monroe Consolidated School System Teachers Association, and the National Parents Teachers Network of Liberia. We call them collectively a consortium. So we're entering an MOU. And the background is first, this is the second MOU we're entering with this consortium. Remember sometime almost two years ago, the government entered into an MOU to fix certain problems that we have. So our way of engaging the MOU, I mean the consortium, is through an MOU where they identify problems, we put those problems down and explain them, we discuss them and find a solution, and we put the solution in here. All of these things, the background is that quite recently Linsu and Fly were talking talk about protests. Okay? And some of the association, why they didn't endorse the protest action, they did identify with the concerns that were being expressed by the student organizations. And that enabled them to engage the government to bring some of the issues that we talk about here. So that's the context here. So we're at this point uh, to look through all of these issues and see. We have a meeting with this, this, uh, uh, this thing was happening under the auspices of Imam Ali Krayi. Okay, the chief imam of the Republic of Liberia, he, he mediated between government, the students, the consortium, and at the end of that discussion, it was clear that the government would enter an MOU to solve problems, to, to, to benchmark what it wants to do. And so this is where this is where we're here. We entered into discussion with the consortium, a ministerial complex, on, I think it was April uh, 13th, April 14th. Uh, April 15, the discussion was held at the Ministerial Complex on April 15. April 14, yeah? yeah? Okay, I'm missing the date. Okay, April 14, right? All right. And that discussion identified 24 issues, problems, and which this memorandum has organized into about 11 broad categories. What are those categories? Number one, the pension law. Number two, the February 2020 and the August 2020 retirement and the benefits to retirees and the handshake. So the whole issue of retirement handshake and people who were retired in August of last year as well as February of last year, the government did two retirements. There were many issues with those two that we included here. Recent dismissal of teachers on the basis of test results. At some point in time, I don't know, more than a year ago, the Ministry of Education dismissed some teachers on the basis of poor exam results under an agreement, I think, with the Global Partners in Education, GPE, I call it that yeah. partners. Yeah, Partnership. Global Partners of Education. And, and then that led, that led to some problems. So the teachers have had some concerns there. Transitioning retirees to NASCO pension payroll for social security benefits. So we're discussing how all the government workers who have retired pension are going to transition to NASCO payment under a new regime. We we'll talked about some of that. Challenges with salary payment and disbursement. So we look at all the salary issues, you know, the delay at this, you know, the disbursement in rural areas, we put them in one category. Absence of banks or financial institutions in some rural areas and delays in receiving salaries at commercial banks. This is a big problem. The issue here is uh, there are no banks in certain counties. And because there are no banks, there are problems with this issue in the, 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 on the president council tour, in places like Grand Cru, uh, Rumaji, the president was told these problems. That there are no banks in Grand For example, in Grand Cru, there's no bank. So the people have difficulty in getting the pay, even when the Ministry of Finance pays. So it's not that the money is not available, but the institution to pay is not there. That's one problem. Then there's another problem they have where there are banks, but when the government pays and they go to these banks, they don't get their money. So that's the result. We have we combine those two things and, and, and try to solve them. 
budgetary allotment for public school operations, including MCSs. So the whole MCSs allotment process, the delay in that, and, and how is that affected uh, by the MCSs, and we'll talk about that. Former supplementary teachers, there was something called the supplementary teachers, who were making 45 US dollars. Now I understand they're making about 95 US dollars. They used to make 45 before, government have increased them 95, but they are still below where they need to be. Let me be clear. So, somebody in the room, they're looking at me very clearly. So I want to be able to. So they say they are, you know, they are, they are, so the government has said, okay, there are no supplementary teachers who are working with them to solve all the issues. So we included them here as a category. And we have the COVID-19 hazard pay, you know, where the government committed top 2 million COVID-19. It's a problem area and that's a solution there. Then we say a public sector monitor and evaluation. So we all agree, the consortium and the government agree that we need to monitor our health systems, our school systems, where there are teacher absenteeism, all of that, we need to do robust monitoring. We, so we put together a framework for that. Then uh, there's a small item that was called the old MOU. We're supposed to pay them 1.3 million Liberian dollars. I mean, what's the equivalent of that now? 1.3 million Liberian dollars. We should have paid uh, almost a year ago. We have been stuck at Ministry of Finance for different reasons, maybe nobody been following it up. The government is making that payment on Monday. All right, so that was the, the final issue. So these are, the, these are the 11 categories. I will go to specific actions on each one. Just to summarize the actions that we're taking, I will name the problem area, then we'll go to the action that the government is taking along with them. So pension law. The first issue here is that there was a lot of confusion about what is the pension law. People were confused that the age of retirement, the legal age at which people retire, is it 60? Is it 65? The law clearly states that the legal age of retirement is 60, not 65. The confusion came because there was a, a, a standing order issued by the civil service agency that put it at 65. So some members of the consortium are holding the 65 date as the legal date. But realistically, the legal date is 60. When you reach 60, you qualify for retirement. Okay? So we explain the whole the whole action, the whole issue here. Now the issue here is that now the government did retire people under the February August process. So what are the actions we're taking? We're saying here we as the government, uh, we commit to making the 2017 pension law publicly available. Because there's some confusion there, people don't know what the law is. So the CSA will, di will distribute copies of the law to the members of the consortium. Yeah, I think I know. Uh, of the law to members of the consortium and to put it on a website, internet, so everybody can see what is the legal age of retirement. Even when we're discussing, there were members of the consortium who were still arguing that the government wrong, the age and answers the five, the age and answers the age and answers the five. But we now have settled that one now, so we know the real age. Now, so. We're saying that even though the real age that 60, but some people are just trying to retire, what the government want to do? So we committed to making, uh, the government has agreed to revise the implementation of retirement exercise uh, to address the concerns of the consortium. So we say that the, the retirement that happened in the past were problematic. So they say they have issues of post 65, they are all the periods of post 67, or, but these are qualified people who have been working and even replacing them can take time, there are no teacher in the classroom, no way of worker to do the work. So what the government say, we grant special dispensation to the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health on the selection and retention of teachers and health workers who are beyond the legal age of retirement. Meaning, Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health will look in the workforce and see if there is a 67 year old person who is qualified, who is competent, energetic, strong, who replacement will cause problem to the system with granting them dispensation to work with the consortium to say, look, we'll put a person back on the, on the, on the contract payroll. That person coming back will not come to the official government payroll, but will go there as a contractor. Are we clear? Yeah, so that, that the, so that special dispensation. The law says 60, but we are recognizing that somebody is 65 years old whose replacement will cause problem. So we should now retire him. We will work with him to transition him over the next year or two, whatever period that is, you'll continue to be on contract while we work to say, okay, this person will replace this expert year who is now 67, 68 years old. All right. We also recruit more teachers. The Ministry of Education will recruit more teachers, the Ministry of Health will recruit more health workers 
from the list of people who are already volunteering. So we got teachers and people who are volunteering already, they're not on the payroll. You want to lead over one and go bring new people or you want to start with the volunteers. So that's the, that's the agreement here. We start with who we call volunteer, then we, before we low us up. Let low inside first, because these people being volunteering. And we do all the exercises in cooperation with the civil service agency and the principal agency for uh, uh, hiring and employment within the government. Anything we do, whether you are Ministry of Health, you are Ministry of Education, you need to coordinate with the civil service. Problem number two, February 2020 and August 2020 retirement. From the discussion we heard that the people are happy, the construction is happy with the February retirement. They say the February retirement went well. It was predictable. Okay, right? You know, a small ten percent, fifteen percent issue there. They are okay. I think they be perfect. The August retirement they say was problematic, right? Today, teachers are not the retirees are not getting their money. They were not informed. You know, one, one government part, one part of the government say well, we provided the information. The HR people didn't give it to so all. I want their stay and no information. So information didn't go. So people went to the bank. And then they were told that you no longer on the payroll. So that led to shock. The government, the government is addressing that. So we want to fix all the issues related to the, the February high retirement and the August retirement. That, those, are the, those are the fixes that we have here in the action. The action say the government has since begun processing the payment of handshake for August retirees. So the people who are retiring in August who have not received the money, the government is working to pay all of your money. I was glad. So money coming. The, the process ongoing now. Everybody will get their money. Everybody will get their money. The government through the MOE has agreed to return more than 85% of the August teachers, uh, August teacher retirees back to the classroom. So all of the people who are retired in August by the Ministry of Education, those teachers, they say about 85% of them will go back to the classroom. Right? On a contract basis. We've got to get our message clear. I hope they're listening to me here. Contract basis. They are retired, they don't have an official payroll, but the government is working with them as contractors. We'll go back. This means that the government has given special disposition to teachers and health workers who have reached the legal age of retirement of 60 years, considering the special, the special circumstances we're in. The government, through the Ministry of Education and Health, is compelling, is compiling the list of all teachers and health workers in terms of facility, location, worker qualification, number of workers to provide the government adequate information. So we're going to a new regime now. So we want more information. In fact, all your teachers, all your workers should give us email where they are located. We want to locate where if you say you are a nurse, you're a teacher, we need to locate you spatially any given time. So we're working with the consortium to collect all of this data. To resolve the concerns of the tenure DOs who were retired. So there's another problem here. One of the problems here is that uh, CEO and DO had contract, and, but the government went and retired them and disregarded their tenure. So even though there was a CEO is 65 years, he had a four-year contract, you know, and so technically you should allow him to finish his contract and then he can go. We are agreeing that yes, we allow them to finish their contract. So 30 days from today, when we sign this, the whole contract process of putting DO back on a contract payroll will begin. That's a commitment we are making. So we, we, we're here in the interest of our people. Three, recent dismissal of teachers on the basis of test results. As I said, some 300 teachers were this, you know, one of the whole global partnership thing. What action the government said they're taking? The government through the MOE is hoping to rehiring these teachers as they qualify themselves to formal education. So we say, even though the government lay off, come back and show us that you are now qualified to go into the classroom. If you present that evidence, then the government will pull you back uh, into the process, okay? So, uh, among this number, 28 teachers have already gone back to school. All those people who were this way, 28 of them have gone back to school and have come back to the Ministry of Education and said, here is um, my certificate, here is my diploma, I cannot teach, and they have been granted uh, that access and they are not teaching. Uh, the government is opening it up to all teachers in that category. This is something that I've been of concern to the national legislature too. The Center for the Ministry of Education, the Center for Main Center, the Civil Center, and they too are concerned that, you know, it's a problematic. We have given tests like that. What kind of test? How is it determined? So we say, okay, we're going back now. Let them come and show that they are qualified to teach. They must show that they've been trained. 
So the invitation to all of you who are outside there hearing this conversation to please engage with the Ministry of Education and do that. Four, we are transitioning to NASCAP and Social Security benefits. So that's a number four. The problem in the area is something called the C1 forms, Social Security numbers, GRL payroll, and Social Security data integration. So that all, so let's face it, the whole Social Security system right now, payroll is broken. They said that's only got C1 forms. I'm told that the C1 forms are fairly. It was the consensual members are complaining that it takes forever. And because of that difficulty, sometimes people don't have the information. So the government is working with the National Social Security to change that system, to digitize all these things. So people can go sit down for two days, three days, four days trying to do form that can take months before the process. It's a, it's, it's a major problem, right? Workers, half of government workers don't have social security numbers. That's a problem also. The government is moving to a policy where all workers will have biometric IDs. All workers should have social security number. So that's a big problem in the system. So the procession agreed to work with us so that everybody gets social security number. Government payroll does not go to payroll information, does not go to social security. That's a problem. The private sector, the people who are the companies who are working with NASCAR, they send their pay information to NASCAR. NASCAR has no problem with private sector. NASCAR has problem with government. Because government over the years has never been giving NASCAR that payroll information. We are not going to be solving that problem. And the consortium will agree to help to work with us. So NASCAR is taking charge of that, working with CSA. So all these systems can come together so that when they say, my Mary is retiring, the day she retired, the following month, all her documentation, all her pay history, where she worked before, everything on computer. She also can go and find program and see all her whole thing. It's just easy. Because she just get the money, everything is there. That's the system we're going to work. When government pay, immediately NASCO has that pay information. Government issue, all these things are going to be systematically solved so that there's going to be no problem here in, 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 in the near future. We're committed to doing all of that, right? So what's the action we're taking? The government has constituted a technical working team comprising NASCOP, MFDP, and CSA to implement a roadmap on automation of the pension system through data sharing and integration between NASCO and the central government systems. All right, so you see that one. The government technical working team through the civil service agency will also work with spending entities to ensure enrollment of existing government employees on the NASCOP system and issue procedures that give up to three month notices to prospective retirees. So, Every retiree will be notified that they are leaving. That one of the issues the consortium have that people will get dismissed and no information are giving them. So we're saying you will be notified about your date of retirement. All right? Very clear. And we're asking H arrows, the human resource officers. In fact, the civil service is calling a human resource, an HR, and a controller forum where we're going to talk about all these things. And, and that's the consortium too will be part of that, that forum. They will be there. We want you all to interact with the HR because some of these issues, the HR are the first people that we want to deal with. The government through the technical team to ensure retirees receive the benefits in the currency in which. Now, what another complaint is that Social Security is paying workers only in Liberian dollars, the retirees, when the retirees made their payment in Liberian dollars and in US dollars. That's a problem. They say that's a problem. It's not fair. If the poor made a payment in US dollars, you give it to them in your dollar. If they make it in a grand dollar, you give it to them in a grand dollar, right? So we say we're working together. So this is great. I already agreed to work with the government, CSA, to solve that problem. So that action there. Five, challenges with salary payment is relevant. No or slow upward movement toward harmonized pay. Now the first one, the point is, you know, under harmonization, the goal of harmonization was to technically raise people who are below their salary to their expected salary, but also to bring some people down who are making more than their expected to a level, within level. What happened in the government is that people came down, and some people came up, 15,000 workers got pay increase. Let's say that the government has 70,000 workers. 15,000 of them received higher salary under harmonization. So harmonization is a story about Pay increase. 15,000 workers receive more money. So the issue is that even though we're moving people up, the real challenge is that the government does not have the money to move everybody to the expected level. So let's take a supplementary teacher, for example, right? 
Alright. Right now, some major teachers are making forty five dollars before. Harmonization brought them to ninety five dollars. But ninety five dollars is not where they were. Let's say uh, some major teachers should be getting three hundred dollars a year ninety five. It, does the government have the money to move all of them today to 300 Same thing with nurses who are making certain level. And the problem with the nurses is because nurses are primary for increase all the time. So are we able to take all the nurses in the country to their expected level, giving the level of revenue? The answer to that is no. I think we all do. So we continue to work. But that means that we should move them gradually. For example, recently you heard that 600 sub mentor teachers or people who are called sub mentor teachers because people say they know sub mentor teacher business again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they were they, they have pay increase 600 of them, yeah. And so, we can't, we, you see that they sub mentor business again. We can't talk about it, but mm -hmm. the surpluses don't appreciate so I can talk about it here. So, they received increment quite recently. That's that, that's the strategy to continue to move people to their level. We can't move everybody. At one time, we don't have that resource. Then there's also the problem of fluctuation in the salary level. So people don't, people do not, re, do not receive. They, 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 they see changes in their salary, and, and the reason that is the case is because of the exchange rate. So here's the thing: if the government passes the budget at one exchange rate, and if the exchange rate changes, the government is not able to execute the budget on the old rate. Because the budget will collapse. That's a simple mathematical financial fact. So there will be no money. So if the rate was 198, which was the case when the rate was 200, the government passed that rate of 200, the rate went down to 150. So technically, there was a big problem because um, uh, the taxpayers will be paying government at a rate of 150, not at a rate of 200. So even though the rate was 200 in the budget, the people who pay their revenue, their taxes to the government, are paying the government at a rate of 150. And so the government is receiving money at that level and it cannot pay at a higher level. Me, will not have money. Alright, so the, the solution to this is number one, there has to be macroeconomic stability, meaning there must be very small change in the exchange rate that nobody will experience this problem. That is the number one solution the government is aiming for. Exchange rate stability. When rate becomes too volatile, it's a, it's a problem either way. Whether the rate go up or the rate come down, it's a problem both ways, right? When the rate, the way the rate came down is good thing, but it will bad for many people because then prices don't move that same way, and so people begin to feel the depreciation in their income. All right, so the government policy is to stabilize. What the government is saying here is, look, even though this is a, a difficult, we still have to find a way to work, and this lies with the national legislature. They may have to allow the government to appropriate certain amount of money to protect certain class of workers, teachers and health workers, mainly, of certain income level, all right? So maybe you say people making between $100 and $95, so my students, my, my supplementary man can use uh, 95 You <laughs> are making between $95 to $200 or $300, if they in certain sector, if they receive, if the exchange rate go to a certain level, we we'll look we we'll look at it money here provided by the national legislature to protect the salary. So the government will pay them at a different rate. People in those priority areas, at the policy. So we're recommending that policy. So we want to work together to see to what extent we can move to that policy. Now our real goal is once the exchange rate is stable, we may not have to move to the policy. But in that case, we can still pass the money. And put it down. If it happens, we go there. If it ain't happening, that money can still be used for something else, right? So that makes the appropriation. So that's just on that on, on the whole the salary move, people are moving to the level and uh, things like that. Then we have the absence of banks or financial institutions, as I said earlier, right? So the the problem here is that where there are no banks, there's a there's a big problem there. The government working through the Central Bank of Liberia, we are agreeing now that no, maybe CBL, if there is no bank somewhere, then CBL will remove there in the meantime. The logistics all that well, we haven't concluded it, but we're working along with the, the governor, the deputy governor of operation, the central bank people, because that this is a major thing that is coming out of the country too. Everywhere the president went. The people say we are aware that the government pay. But we're not getting our money. There's no financial institution. 
and the government stopped the process of handling of carrying bulk cash. You know, the government used to fly money in out. Those I think it's risk it. You put several billion dollars, you fly, you carry it, everybody can run away with it, all kind of risk there. You know, in this day and age, you know, it's not a good thing to be flying money all over the place, paying people for paying with money. So, but we have to go to a system where there is a financial institution that is managing the pay of public sector workers. And the central bank is a major lead entity there, if a commercial bank. So, once the central bank moves in that area, making them, if a commercial bank goes there, then maybe the central bank can turn over to that commercial bank and say, we already have funds, we have a system here. So that's what we were thinking about, we were thinking about that. The government is also working with, with, with the central bank and the other commercial banks. So to solve this problem of why is it that when the government pays, then a, a local bank in an area doesn't pay. So that whole issue about you know availability of cash, the timing and the strategy, we are working with that. So the agreement here is that any worker in River G County or in Betu Grand Crew County who gets their salary, mutual fund of pay, when they go to the bank there, they must receive their money. You know, in River G, where a bank is, they will get their money. They cannot get their money two weeks after pay. They cannot get the money one week after pay. They should not get it because the government has already paid. When the government pay means money is available, but then it must translate to people receiving the money in the rural area, all right? where a bank is. So why? One of the things I've heard why the banks are saying that the cost of operating in the rural area sometimes of doing other things is, is, is way more than the benefit. So the government too that will come on board to see how. So maybe one of the solutions may be that look, these banks need logistics. Can you know in terms of public, can the government work with them? We secure the logistics so that all of this can happen just to make sure that workers and nurses and internal affairs people, even the mines and energy people who are in the rural areas, they get the pay on time. As they will call a big meeting with all of the, the nine banks, the central bank, where we go out and, and diagnose the issue and then find a solution. We're not going to the technical, but we're making the commitment that you will get your money on time when we pay, and the central bank will make the move to go where there is no commercial bank so they can handle government payments. Seven, budget allowance for MCS is a time of disruption of MCS. So, the reality is that MCS is part of the budget, but there's been some issue with them getting their allotment in recent time. So, you know, it's a problem. So that means that if they don't have the allotment, then they will go to money that are intended to the operation of schools to run the system one on one. We say we, we want to put a we want to put a halt, we want to put a halt to that. Uh, so what are the actions we are getting out of there? And then there were some uh, there was a, some fees. The, the, the parent teacher association, right? I hear. And they, what the, the, the PTA, the PTA network here, the same. They also need a certain share of the resources, you know. So we've been having the conversation. So here's the action in that area there. All right. We say one to improve the operation of public sector institutions, including public schools. The government will continue to ensure that the budgetary allocation to public sector institutions, youth and student organizations, and the civil committee will be disbursed in a timely manner during the execution of the transitional budget beginning July 2021. With this support, the government and the consortium agreed to the following about the utilization of the registration fees. PTA will get a portion of the registration fees separate from the portion that goes to their schools. PTA will not collect any extra fees going forward. But I think you want to, you want to throw that some light on this structure. Okay. Uh, the the there is some fees that are collected, as we all know, uh, ed education is, is free, but because parents themselves decided that they wanted to help the government, we structure what we call registration fee. It's 3000 for high school, 2000 for junior high, and 1000 for elementary. In the past, there were extra fees being charged for PTA. What we are saying now going forward is out of that fee that will be collected, the PTA will get some of that money so that no extra money is put on parents and guidance of our students. So that is the new arrangement that we are going to do. All right. So uh, that then for transparency, monitor and accountability of the flow of registration fees, which he was just describing, right? 
The NTA of National Teacher Association of Bureau will be added to the mobile money system, which is the payment medium for registration fee. So currently, uh, the Ministry of Education along with others can see all of the monies that are collected because there's a big issue. The, the schools are, even the consultants being complaining that they want the schools themselves to collect this money. But in the past, we've seen, say, okay, if schools are collecting the money, what is the level of protection, the transparency there, right? The school collecting $400,000 and say, okay, we'll collect them with $100,000. So there are issues there. So we say for better uh, transparency and monitoring, we have something review who will manage how, many, how much is collected at the central level and how much schools are getting. So the National Teacher Association Budget Memorandum will be among those who will see that the school in River G County collected this. And I mean, the, the government collected the, the, the mutual education and River G schools received this portion of the collection. They're able to verify all of that on the system. So the National Teacher Association will be representing the consortium there. The government will continue to allocate funding to MOE for DEOs. So before some of that money were going to DEO, MOE, we are now abolishing all of that money. DEO will now receive part of the fees, right? And that's the agreement with that fee. So the DEO, like we say, won't try to get them money by, get a car, all that one at the future, at the future program. Work with them to ensure that they get a lot of time so that uh, uh, they can draw from that money. The MOE, MSCS, and the PTA will work together collaboratively to review the procedures for the utilization of the registration fee to ensure transparency and effectiveness. So the, the, the Parent Teacher Association will be involved with the whole administration of working. MOE has already stopped schools from imposing high school fees on students within the public school system. So this is very important. The, he does name this fee structure. Uh, primary school is what? Well. The fees are what? Well, $1,000. Junior high or middle school, two thousand dollars. High school or secondary school, three thousand. In the public school system, like right now, no parent monitoring or coming out of this memorandum. Any school that is paying charging more than those amounts will face disciplinary action. We are very clear. In high school, if you are a parent listening to this conversation. $3,000 is the registration fee. It's the maximum registration fee you should ever pay. Anybody charging you $3,000 one cent, report that institution to the government through the Ministry of Education. Report that school. Nobody. If you're in elementary school, $1,000. If you're child in middle school, $1,000, you, 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 you should know to pay. So we're clear. Nobody should say school fee high. No, no, no. It's not going to happen. It's not. Anybody doing so will be in violation. So very clear on that. The measure will be thoroughly monitored by stakeholders within the sector to ensure compliance. We will monitor it. In fact, the monitoring framework we put in place will also monitor that. We will, we will name and shame schools that are trying to do so. We will publish a list of schools. We will, do, we will use transparency in this digital age to, to, solve, age to solve problems. When we see bad things, we publicize it. Mutual education website, we start creating a record of schools that are charging this. Schools that are in compliance will also be praised. Alright? So, we should look at that. Number eight, formal supplementary teachers. Formal supplementary, no matter you're winning the deal. But everything is supplementary. Yeah. 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 So, as I was saying, you know, the supplementary teachers, the, the six hundred of them receive pay increase quite recently. And we're supposed to give them the list because they, they want to trust that these people actually receive the increase. So the government said, well, in seven days, we gave you the list of all of the teachers who have... Been. So the increase is from 95, right? Yeah, from 95 to 267. From 95 to 267, right? Yeah. Now, now you've got one person that moved from 95 to 267, right? One, one person depending on the uh, BSE teacher mm -hmm. moved from 95 to 267. So, okay, so BSE teacher who's earning 95 dollars is moving from 95, the new moon is 267. That's, uh, but at the moon, you won't be on that. that, that. Yeah, the uh, real moon, the uh, real moon, at least on the five. Yeah. But we're letting him short of a real moon to 265 for the same reason of, you know, you see, let's face it, if we increase all salary of everybody, there's no money to put new people. Right? So there's a tension in the government field, there's a trade off. Increasing people's salary versus hiring more people. Where, where do you go? 
Where do you go? Do you do you do you get more somewhere in the middle? Eh? Do you do you get more people at 100, 150, or get a few people at 365? Right? Yeah. So that's a tension. That's a policy tension there. So the government is trying to have a cake and eat at the same time. So in the case there, we carry a sensor up. Then maybe in the meantime, we hire a few more people. We will let time pass. Then we add the next, you know, 500 supplementary teacher. You know how we doing it. We, we know we we it, we blow it, we manage it. You can't just do one thing, one time in policy. It's a shock, all right. So yeah, so that's it. Um, so some better teacher that you know, and some good thing is how uh, the, the president, you know, the money six hundred. <laughs> yeah, you see, that, you see, he's fighting for the people. So we just say you'll be among the last two hundred, <laughs> so you can continue to fight for your people that will get paid. Yeah, so you all listen, you're not a man at least. You see any other lady, they want to teach you in the middle of the way. Alright, good. Hazard pay. There's been some confusion about the hazard pay situation. The reality is that, you know, the, the two million dollars is not a lot of money mm -hmm. to give to our health workers. As the president said in the state of the nation, mm -hmm. we can't, you know, we can't pay, we can't pay health workers. You know, people who are on front line, you know, putting their lives at risk for the survival of the country through health. We can't pay you. So COVID, it's not a real pay. It's just, just a recognition that we, we got there. They wanted eight million by again. The government, you know, you know, yeah. Like I said, working on, talking about that. But it can shop. Yeah, we won't pay the eight million, but our hand shop. Yeah, you know. So we we settled on two million for the health workers and one million for private school teachers. You know, the COVID thing affected all of us. Out of that two million, we are paid one point three million. 1.3 million, right? We still got 700,000 to go. But the government is saying that, look, even though you receive 1.3 million, they ought to report on how that money was distributed for you to get the other 700,000. So that the public financial management law, the law says that the Ministry of Finance cannot be paying money where people are not submitting reports. So one of the things that people can delay at Ministry of Finance is that every time Ministry of Finance delays, it's because they're asking for the right documentation. If my people don't have the right documentation and they make payment, the auditor will come and he will flag that whether your other report and the thing that they put looking for there. So the law says if the minister pays money that is illegal in a legal way, the minister can be punished in the law. So if health workers uh, want to receive the seven hundred thousand, let the ministry work to get the rest of the report and, uh, and the process going on. So the last seven hundred thousand will be paid. But the information that the government are paying is not correct. If, if the government is saying bring the report, you get the other seven hundred thousand. Then we have uh, the whole thing about public sector performance monitoring evaluation number 10. We all agree that we need to monitor. When drugs go to the hospital, how long does it stay there? We already said we got sufficient money for drugs, right? But then when we get a small money, we put it there. Does it serve the purpose? How do we monitor? Quite recently, the health people put together a monitoring team that has been working, right? Yeah. It's been that we need to do the same thing with the on, on the education side, other side, and then together we will meet with all these monitoring teams. And maybe we need to take monitoring to a new level. Maybe monitoring evaluation is not something like just sitting down in one ministry, you know, Ministry of Finance, Planning, Division, or Ministry of Agriculture. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's not the best way to monitor. Maybe monitoring should be all, all monitoring together. So we don't say, oh, I got a monitoring division, the other person got a monitor. No. We look at health and education that require massive monitoring. We make the investment, let develop a capacity across entities, not one entity, to monitor because. Schools and health locate, are located in the same place. So you can also benefit from the, the, the technique, the education people, I mean, the health people using your class and technique to school. Every day, teachers are going to be in classroom. The day a teacher does not go to a classroom, somewhere in the system, it has to be flagged that teacher A didn't show up in class. Now, somebody recording that, when it reaches five days in a row, then it goes to a national system. Then Mr. Ed will publish a database of teachers' absentees across the country. That's how we monitor. When teachers know that they are monitor, every day, every week, teachers should send in a, what do you call it? Thing? Lesson play, right? Yeah. Are we monitoring for lesson planning? Are teachers actually sending lesson plan every every week? By Friday, if you don't get the lesson plan to the principal, you know you're a problem. You're being flagged for that. Are we doing that? Maybe we're not doing that, but because we're not monitoring for that. So the minister of education and his staff are working. They say they are going. That's why they insisted that we put this there. That. As a part of this obligation, you, the consortium, should help us to pay your teachers to do their work also. The teacher in the classroom got to be on time, got to teach, 
And that's it. The reason why they have left the class where we told the person that we were due, right? Sometimes also it's gotta do with the payment difficulties, right? Mm -hmm. So when you receive the money in the bond, the bond to go money. When you pay the information is that when we correct all of the pay system, all the teachers will come back to the classroom. It, 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 we still operating on the assumption, right? Mm -hmm. And then your assumption is a fact. So some of the some of the things that the way I saw the problem from was that they were part of the, re, the recruitment of new teachers. But no, those teachers are somewhere there, they will come back. So we actually need to find more teachers, but the real problem is that once we regularize the pay systems, they are going to come back to the class, and that's what we've been told, right? Okay, and we're going to commit to doing that. So uh, that's just that's it. That's just, I don't know whether this was a summary, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good for the information to go out there to the people. Because people are listening. So many people, most of the people will not read this thing. They will go by what we are saying here. They will hear it by radio. And they will say, oh, I need now to know that the age of pension is 60. Where are you reading the document? And that's 65. So everybody who's 59 years old, you please start preparing for your retirement now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You just listened to Liberia's finance minister. Next is the consultant representation. So we're making our way to get the consulting worker president. So let him respond. Then we'll see whether the president will ask you questions and how we'll take it together. Yeah. The first. So uh, welcome. Okay. Um. We are even grateful today for this unique program. As it is to the explanation of why we are here, we have been discussing over the days concerning our tax as a public sector workers. And by the grace of God, we are heading for a good result. We want to say a big thank you to the government for listening to us and we are praying and hoping that whatsoever we have put on paper and we give ourselves three months we show and we hope that in the three months we're going to get some good results we're going to take the message back to our people to the teachers they help with us and especially most of those things have been very very cardinal have been discussed as we tell the teachers that will be going back to the classroom, we will also be working along with the government to monitor. Because when we are talking about we want to get full salary, which you already do, you should also do the job. So we want to send it out there. When we go back to our regular offices, we want to send a message up to our people. And there are a few actions, maybe on our own, we have our own press conferences in our area to explain, explain our portions, but we're not able to read all yet. Every part in our game on, there were actions to those problems, and we, we are satisfied with those actions, because we all discuss it together, we agree together. So we want to say thank you to the press, thank you to everyone, and I think we can do it better together. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. For almost four days now, we've been laughing to our discussion, and we, the Mamere said, commend the government. We also want to commend the, the youth and student group that uh, mounted some pressure, and uh, that also help us to resolve to what we agree here tonight. Uh, yes, it is true that there has been this vigorous confusion as to when you have the pension. The age issue has become a uh, an issue of debate on the street, uh, in the street corners. Uh, we went through our discussion with authorities at the civil service agency and NASCAR. We got to find out that indeed there is a law. And the law says from NASCAR that the pension uh, the age is 60. Okay? And so through the memorandum of understanding, we asked the authorities at the civil service agency to have this uh, printed into the hand bill, the civil service standing order, so that at least it will be sent to us, so that our people will be educated on it. 
Another thing that we were so pleased about in the memorandum of understanding uh, it has to do uh, with this uh, uh, issue of banking, especially for our civil servants and uh, those that are working in the, in the Leeward counties, in the far to reach areas. Okay? Now, the memorandum of understanding has uh, declared it to us that uh, the authorities at the Central Bank of Liberia at least will be making some inroads into the county so that our people, when government pays today, at least every civil servant should be paid across the sector. If now when we in most of the other county are being paid, then our brothers and sisters in other parts of the, of the country are sitting waiting for one week, two weeks, three, three weeks. Okay, so at least that has been curbed through this memorandum of understanding. The manager said we are only looking up to government for the full implementation of what we have uh, put uh, together here. You know, and we believe our government, we believe strongly our government will live up to, to these uh, commitments made you know, and the action points uh, uh, spell out. So we want to say thank you again very much uh, to all public sector, again, monitoring team from our own group, okay? Because we cannot be asking government for, for um, implementing benefit that we ourselves are lagging behind. So uh, the, the monitoring mechanism uh, we are just going to play a major role into it. We'll be, we'll be uh, reviewing, we'll be reviewing the activities into the health sector. The drugs are going there because our people are dying from curable sicknesses. Okay, things that we feel that uh, uh, that can be that can be handled here. And they are referring our people to Ghana and other places. So those drugs when they go into the hospitals, we will monitor to ensure that those drugs stay there for our people, our citizens to get treated. Also, the school system. Most of the school, most of the CEOs are finding comfort, comfort zoom. Some, some are coming to Mosorado and they do not want to go back to the assigned areas. We are going to start monitoring. Seven seven, those are working on administrators and agencies. We ourselves are going to be monitoring. So it is a whole range of uh, uh, things that we are going to be doing because we cannot be putting fire on governments back, then we ourselves are not doing the work. So we want to say thank you for this all important gathering and we, we believe and hope that what we are put to, uh, uh, on paper will be, uh, will be well achieved and, and uh, well done. Thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, the media they don't have any question. With that, we come to the end of this process. We go directly, we go directly now to the signing ceremony in the government of the and the consulting of public sector organization.
Well, folks, thank you. This is how we love to come to the end of this live broadcast. Thank <laughs> you. 